People who own multiple pets, what is some drama going on between them right now? The Dachshund will not stop invading the Beagle's personal space, crate, to suck on her ears. The Beagle has had it and wants it to stop. Two things though, Beagles have a really hard time being stern and intimidating. Dachshunds are not easily intimidated. So this morning we had 40 minutes of Beagle growling, not very convincing sounding, and Dachshund sass, barking back, ending up as usual with an annoyed Beagle with soggy ears. It's hopeless. One thing I learned about growing up with the Dachshunds, they don't understand what personal space is, and even if they did they don't give a ref. So true, when I was married we had just gotten a Dachshund puppy and she had to be touching us both always. We would sit on the couch with her between us and she'd have a part of her in contact with both of us. One day we tested her and would slowly start to inch away and she would readjust to stay in contact. Eventually my ex and I would be on opposite sides of the couch and her nose would be touch one of us and her tail the other. What's personal space? No cuddles? I don't like Dachshunds of that. In college, we lived in the second floor and would leave the sliding glass door open with the screen door shut on nice days. We'd often come home to find my dog, stuck on the balcony. We figured out that my roommate's cat was opening the screen door to let the dog out and then closing the door. Look doggo, the door is open, go smell all the smells. I am your friend, I help, close his door. Haha <laughs> victory is mine drool face, now I can slumber in peace. We also caught the cat knocking napkins and mail off the counter for the dog to chew. We thought she was knocking it off herself until we caught the helpful cat providing her goods. I think the cat enjoyed us scolding the dog. My two dogs like the same bed so they will fight over it until the end result is they just both sleep on it. While the other bed just goes and you I don't see the difference between the two they are both super soft. Is it positioning the room? What if you switched the unused bed with the bed they fight over? I have moved the beds around. Sometimes they will sleep separately with one dog reluctantly taking the second option bed. If I switch the beds, then they will sleep on it as well. But if both beds are present, their favorite is always their priority. Lol. My dad says it might be the texture. One is slightly smoother so it feels cooler. My roommate has two large male dogs and I have a small female dog. My roommate's male dogs like to roughhouse and play around sometimes. Whenever they get too loud my little dog will raise her head and growl ever so slightly. Just enough for them to hear her. As soon as she does, they stop for a minute and start playing quieter. If I'm surreal to see, I had a female chihuahua mix who was like that. We used to call her the fun police at the park, because any time dogs would start off housing a little too much, she'd run over and get in the middle of it and the other dogs would just stop. She was like 9 pounds. My mom had a chihuahua mix that behaved like this. We also called her the fun police. Dogs are 100% about attitude and not physical capability. The number of big dogs I've seen completely subservient to little dogs they could easily eat is just hilarious. Big dogs get any aggression trained out of them early while some people think it's cute when their little dog acts aggressive. Which encourages the little dog to fancy itself as the alpha wolf. Three cats. Two on purpose. Then we had a happy accident for the third. Maku, Chloe, and Oliver. Oliver wants to play constantly, and both the girls hate that. They'll cuddle with him in order to share a lap, but they get so mad at him when he tries to play. They don't hurt him though, just swatting with no claws and growls. Whenever they try to do that though he runs to my mom and cries until she picks him up. He's definitely got youngest child syndrome. My mom's elderly cat hated having his tail touched, and was generally a grouchy old man. My sister's cat was the platonic form of little brother. So he would go up and gently tap elder cat's tail and then look innocent when elder cat hissed and growled at him. Sometimes sister's cat would stand next to elder cat, hovering his paw right over and clearly saying, I'm not touching you <laughs> while elder cat angrily yelled at him. I live on a farm. Every day is a new case of the cats trying to eat something they shouldn't. On my uncle's farm a cat got into its head that attacking a cow was a good idea, jumped on it, bit it around the neck. Of course when one cow runs, they all run. Cat caused a mini stampede that took out several fences, and somehow walked away unscathed. Farm cats have 99 lives. The dog doesn't like when the cat gives him dirty looks. The cat knows this, will deliberately stare him down, and then expertly leap out of the way when he goes to chase her. 
Our dog is very stupid and cannot stand when the cat stares at him. We have a baby gate to keep the dogs away from the cat's food and litter. And the cat will sit behind the baby gate, tail swishing, and bore holes into him. He loses his goddamn mind. As a kid we had a dog on an invisible fence, and a pair of outdoor cats. The cats memorized the entire boundary of the fence, and would spend all day sunning themselves inches beyond the dog's reach as she stared and vibrated with tension. After many years of this, I was coming home from a walk with the dog and she managed to slip her collar, then sprinted at one of the cats from outside the fence. Cat tensed up preparing for a fight. Dog realized cat wasn't running, skidded to a halt in front of her, sniffed her for a few seconds, barked once in her face, then proudly trotted back to me. Life's goal accomplished. Dog 1 is trying to trick Dog 2 into following her into the garden so that Dog 1 can then storm back indoors to take Dog 2's bone she is enjoying. Dog 3 is sitting in the on the couch quietly waiting for this to happen. To be the actual winner of this scheme. I occasionally watch my friend's two dogs a Pyrenees and a Border Collie mix at my place and with my own dog. The Pyrenees acts dumb but is actually way more crafty than the other two. The boys. If either of them are taking up a spot she wants like her favorite spot on the couch or the sunny spot by the front door. She'll walk over to a window and start growling and barking at nothing until the boys come over to see what's up. Then she saunters over to the now open spot and leaves the other two still barking and confused. Yes, when my baby girl got old she would lay on the couch and when she heard someone pass by she's give a low growl to get other dogs worked up and barking like crazy at the windows. She was too tired to do it. But someone had to bark at everyone walking by the house, and she watched them get yelled at. Years ago had I three bully breed dogs my only girl used to pull this on the boys when they were hogging the couch. Always made me laugh at her smarts. In Dutch we literally say when two dogs fight over a bone, a third one will take it. In Czech we say when two are fighting the third one is laughing. This exact thing happens at my house and it's hilarious. We got a puppy two weeks ago. Our elderly cat is furious when we do dog training sessions because cat deserves the treats instead. We end up doing joint training sessions and the cat is actually much more consistent than puppy. In my house, if a package crinkles, it must be treats. And if there are treats, they must be for kitty and puppy. But kitty first. Kitty. First. We made the crinkle mistake for far too long. Changed to a tub or jar. Just pour the packets in. Saves you getting hassled when you just want a damn M&M in peace. We made the mistake of giving one of our two cats a piece of rotisserie chicken cause I had dropped it while striping the meat off. Our cat can now pinpoint which grocery bag has the chicken if we buy one and attempts to rip into the bag to get it. He also sits next to me and meows while I prepare it for salads or whatever. <laughs> to cats. I opened the window for the first time this year since the weather is finally nice. They have been pushing each other away for the best spot to smell the air. Same. One open window in the house. In my office next to my desk. My two girls usually share really well but the window has been causing squabbles. AWW. That annoyed look on Kitty's face. Corgi won't stop herding my chickens. My mom has a herding dog who came and stayed with us for a week. During the day I leave the chicken run open so they can roam the yard and she kept putting them back in their pen lol. I have a cat, a puppy, and a dog. Cat likes to lure the puppy under the bed and he can get under but gets stuck in the middle where it's the lowest. I have to rescue him, usually around 2am and he wakes me up by scratching the floor trying to get out. Cat also likes to knock off things from the counter he knows puppy should not be chewing on. Puppy and cat like to wrestle with each other, but dog doesn't like the ruckus and barks at them to stop. Cat doesn't like the barking so then he chases dog. Puppy follows cat and there's a train of three Tom and Jerry style through the house. At the end of the day though they are always in a big cuddle pile so I think they'll be okay. Puppy follows cat and there's a train of three Tom and Jerry style through the house. I hope your house has a hallway full of doors so that they can constantly run through one and come out of a different one. Sounds like it can be chaos sometimes. Lol they are all really good boys but my fiance has been gone for the past 2 weeks and sometimes I do feel like I'm a single mother of 3 toddlers. Puppy follows cat and there's a train of 3 Tom and Jerry style through the house. At the end of the day though they are always in a big cuddle pile so I think they'll be okay. The puppy. The dog and the pup and the cat the cat and the dog and the puppy at that. The dog and the puppy. The cat and the pup. 
Go downwards and upwards, and downwards and up. At first they go leftwards, and then they go right. By dawn and by morning. By daytime and night. By spring and by summer. By winter and fall. Wherever. Together forever. Go all. And when they have hustled and bustled and raced and hurried and scurried and scampered and chased. The dog and the cat. And the cat and the pup. They stop all their running and just. Cuddle up. We adopted a heavily abused and partially blind dog who was full of anxiety. We also have four cats but only two of them are brave enough to go visit her. The drama is that when she hears all the cats running around playing she wants to join but being semi blind and a 50 stroke 50 chance it won't be a friendly cat she just gets sad and whines. Maybe attach bells to the friendly ones? This is a great idea. I have a blind dog and I have a bell in his harness so I can hear him wandering around. Doesn't wear it all the time. I now also have a 10 month old baby who likes to surprise the blind dog while he's sleeping so I added bells to the baby and now the dog. And I know where the baby is at all times. That's so sad. She just wants to play. I don't anymore but I once had both a cat and a guinea pig some 25 years ago and they seemed to hate each other. Whenever my cat got near the cage the guinea pig would start squealing aggressively at the cat and the cat would swat at the cage while sporting a look of utter disgust. That was a daily routine. It was the first thing that happened in the morning and it lasted a minute then they didn't bother each other for the rest of the day and the cat could even nap on top of the cage at times without any protest for either. It was just part of the day for them. That drama just had to happen every day. They went on like that for 7 years. The guinea pig got really sick because he was old and I realize he doesn't have long left. I picked him up out of the cage and put him on my lap so he didn't have to die alone. The effing cat came up and licked the guinea pig and laid on my lap beside him until he passed. Apparently the cat loved him all along. The 7 year drama was just their thing. That still amazes me. Dear diary. It has been 152 days since the human has brought home a large rodent. I assume it is intended to be a meal in the future but the human perplexes me by continuing to feed the rodent and keeping it alive in a small cage. Meanwhile the human still feeds me small pellets. I have repeatedly tried to draw attention to the perfectly adequate meal at the tip of my paw but the human seems to be either deaf, stupid, or just cruel. There is no logic in this place. Dear diary. The rodent died today. Ona took it out of its cage and let it rest on her lap in its final moments. Her back was angled over the rodent and her face was stretched in an odd way, like eating foul fish. I decided to lay next to her, allowing my presence to comfort her. I think it helped. I wanted to consume the fresh corpse, but something in me said that it would be poor form. That is so adorable. My cat Isis would cuddle and groom our elder rats before they passed while our other cat, Kitty, would ignore them. When it was her turn, Kitty groomed Isis. We have two dogs. A very large all black German Shepherd, and a recently adopted miniature Dachshund. At first they were getting along fine but now the German Shepherd literally follows the little Dachshund around everywhere he goes. They are literally inseparable now and it's kind of adorable lol. The only real drama that's come from this is that now both dogs fight for attention whenever the other seems to get some. Here's a picture of them in case you all wanted to see them. Wow your pet dog has a pet dog. We always want to see pictures. Always. My 15 year old cat just died a week ago. He had a heart condition and we knew he was close to the end of his journey. His sis yellow lab has been looking for him all around the house since then. She won't sleep cause she is patrolling the house looking for her bro. Oh this is sad. I've heard that in cases like this it helps to let the living pet examine the body of the dead one. That way they might understand what happened and stop searching. Given that this was a week ago I assume that opportunity is gone. But hopefully she will stop in time. My condolences. Losing a pet is hard. A friend of ours who volunteers with a feral cat CNR program. Capture. Neuter. Release. Called to kittens who were too friendly to release. She called us up and said. Hey. You like cats. Foster these to kittens. Please. So now our 14 year old cat Iris gets to deal with two rambunctious little boys. Sam the Siamese is a little afraid of her. So he doesn't bother her much, but Rafe the tabby very much wants to be friends with her. He'll even drop his favorite mousey next to her while she's sleeping. Iris was very put out that these little punks were invading her space, but she is slowly learning to tolerate the boys. She still deals out hisses and swats when one of them crosses a line, and they're respectful enough to back off. 
BTW, the boys are a foster fail, they are in their forever home. Please offer Iris our sympathies she has to deal with Alad of Shrite now. Old drama. But when I moved into my last apartment my cats met my roommate's cat, Jenny. Jenny is an incredible creature, talkative and cuddly and weird but also passive aggressive as f. She would get a little jealous if my cats got more attention. But mostly she just got mad when she didn't get to go outside. When she got angsty she took it out on the other cats. In my first week she pushed my oldest off the balcony. Marzipan hit the iron fencing below and lost a tooth. Somehow Mar still loved Jenny. I had to rehome one of my blue hellers because of littermate syndrome. She wasn't liked by our oldest dog and didn't take her hints. And when her and her sister would play randomly they would start to attack each other. We couldn't handle the stress of them growing up together. She lives in a farm now with another cattle dog. We still vest and get multiple pictures a week. My younger horse got jealous that the older one got a new halter. So when I wasn't looking she stole it and pooped on it. For once. There was no drama in the cat tent yesterday. They were so happy to be outside. For the first time in 6 months, they just sat around and sniffed stuff. Dimitri and Igor always do well together in the tent. But yesterday, even angry Anya was super calm. You're late ready for this with your lovely dog and cat stories. So I have many fish tanks. And one of them contains our dramatic society. Two clone fish, an enormous anemone. An assortment of snails including two cowry snails, a red-lipped bivalve, a blenny and a couple of sea moths. So the cowry snails were a valentine's present from my fiancé and they have spines. Where do they want to go? Wherever the anemone is. Cue the anemone getting literally buttered by cowry spines and climbing out of the hole it has lived in for 6 months to roll around the tank stinging the shout of all the corals and killing most of them. The anemone looks like Thielu's flashlight it's massive. Easily 10 inches in diameter on the oral disc in the stalk is like a human arm. If it had the wood to put its tentacles on the cowrie on the run around then it would probably be able to eat them. It has eaten a couple of unwary fish before and is known for swallowing razor clams with the shell and all but the cowrie have not only outsmarted it at every turn but they appear to find a reason to ram it in the arse every day. Which causes the nem to flee at a similar speed and try to settle elsewhere. Only to be bullied again a few hours later. I am looking to rehome the anemone for this reason it's a heteractus magnifica if anyone in the UK would like to buy it, lol. We have two rabbits and a kitten. One of our rabbits Willow has a bad habit of humping our other rabbit, Luna. Even though they are both girls, and neutered. So lately Luna has been striking back and full on face effing Willow. I guess Luna's sick of Willow sh- Also whenever the kitten is in the same room as the bunnies, he runs for them, and the bunnies get scared. The bunnies either run back into their hutches, or jump up and land on the cat when he attacks, or they run away leaving a trail of poop pellets on the carpet. I think your bunnies might be gay. Fiona the pitbull wants to be friends with Delilah the orange cat, but Delilah yowls and slashes her face if Fiona looks at her wrong. Delilah, meanwhile, likes to drink all of Fiona's water. This has been going on for 2 years now. 